Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Sherrard Show. I am your host, Sherrard, hoping you're all having a wonderful Saturday afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Now, this is, you don't have to adjust your monitor, your screen. Uh, we have two of the most beautiful ladies I've ever seen in a long time stop by the Sherrard Show, as well as a gentleman and a scholar um, to talk about the music industry um, this afternoon. Oftentimes, um, just like on last week's episode of the Sherrard Show, speaking to the Isley Brothers about the industry of today. How is it the same? Is it different? And what can we do to make it better? So we have three individuals. Uh, one individual, um, she is a Grammy award-winning singer. She has toured with Michael Jackson. She has toured with Julio Iglesias, Glenn Campbell, Aretha Franklin, Elton John, Quincy Jones, the list goes on. And also she's an author of a book that she's going to be speaking about that's going to uh, allow her to transcend her knowledge to the youth so that they can better make decisions in the industry as well as um, enhance their longevity. And then also we have a young lady who's been in the industry for many years. She also is a musical icon who has toured with the likes of uh, Wayne Newton, the legendary Ray Charles, just to name a few. And she has also Queen Miss America Washington, D.C. Um, beautiful young lady has been around the world many times. And also, she is doing, still doing big things and making it um, happen and being an example in the industry. Mrs. Avis Harrell has stopped by the Sherrard Show. Welcome. And then this gentleman here, um, when I first heard his song and I heard his sound, I thought of Sam Cooke. I thought of Bobby Womack. I've also thought of many soulful singers who just know how to sing. And I'm proud to have him on the show. Mr. Kobe Cordell, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Appreciate you. Glad to be here. Welcome. Okay, so we're going to start. Um, first of all, Stephanie, I, I, my first question, question to you is how is it when you started in an industry many years ago, when most people's careers are like a running back in the NFL, maybe three to four years at tops, you being in the industries for so many years and still having stay in power. What is your secret? Preparation, skills, uh, taking care of myself not playing the game that's a big one not playing the game you know um just being able to be in this industry loving what i'm doing i'm prepared to be in it and having wonderful mentors that help me along the way because you can't do it by yourself now now you um you first of all you work with michael jackson legends Julio Iglesias, people um, oftentimes hear about Enrique Iglesias, but his dad was in the industry before his son was, and you, you work with him, as well as Glenn Campbell, one of my favorite singers, and then Aretha Franklin. Now, how were you able to um, be able to link up with these kind of individuals in the industry? Well, and two of the people that just left here, um, Helen Reddy that I toured with, and Mac Davis, I was on his, I was a dancer, actress, and a singer on his TV show, The Mac Davis Show. Um, what was the question you asked me? <laughs> Now, how were you able to link with those individuals? How was I able to meet with them? To link up with them to the point where when oh, people- link, have Okay, to link up with them. <laughs> yes, but word of mouth. You see, after being with uh, Jerry Peters, who helped me get in the industry, touring with him and, and uh, uh, being on Clive Davis, you know, on a wrist and all these record labels and Lou Adler at, at uh, A&M, it's like word of mouth. When the producer sees your work ethic, they tell the next producer. When a contractor tells the next artist, you need a Stephanie Sproul to write, you know, backgrounds on, I just want to stop, or Michael Jackson, um, can you feel it? Or be with Enrique Iglesias along with his father, you know, it's word of mouth. And because I have such a great work ethic and I was prepared and ready to do what I needed to do, I went in there, showed up and showed how. And so the word just got around the industry, which made me one of the top um, contractors. So they believed in me to come in and bring the other girls that will add to the backgrounds. So I not only was a background singer, I was the background uh, vocal arranger because a lot of the regular Umbi B paid to two for Donna Summer. That's me, you know, on all these things, bad girls, everything that I've done thus far, over 1400 gold and platinum and, you know, records that I've performed on. I did it because I was prepared and word of mouth. I was somebody who had what team. It's all about working together, right? The acronym is what together everyone achieves more. I just wasn't in it for myself. I was in it for the sound and for the project to be successful. So that's, 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 that's what it was. I was a team That's player. some awesome yeah. stuff. Now I'm going to kick it to you, um, Avis. Now again, Avis also I toured with Ray Charles. Um, she was a member of one of the, the Raylette girls. Is that correct, Avis? That's correct. 
Yes, for now, three Avis, years, yes. Now, for three years, um, and also working in Vegas, the circuit with Vegas. And then also you can see why, obvious why she was Miss America in Washington, D.C. But now tell me, Avis, how were, what was your start in the industry? How did you get started, first off, in the industry? Well, my family. And um, we, we sang together as a family. We had a singing group called The Fawns. And as young teens, we were on RCA Records. And uh, we performed together uh, the late 60s because it was actually my sister's group. Uh, she started from Anacostia High School in Washington, D.C. And her name is Ayana Harrell. And we had a number one record in Washington, D.C. And from there, we continued to record and got on the go-go the scene and R&B scene. And one single after the other, people around town got to know us. Once the family decided to go into different directions, I got into the Miss Black America contest. And from there, I met Stevie Wonder. And he said, if you ever come to Los Angeles, I'll send you to all my vocal coaches, the same coaches that he had, that Michael Jackson had, uh, Seth Riggs, Vince Perello, and so on and so forth. Um, from there, um, I was hanging out with Stevie one evening and um, word got around from Suse Green of the Supremes that Ray needed a girl to fill in. So she asked Stevie, could he send her someone? So he sent me over to audition for him. And from there, I've met wonderful people like uh, Sherry Payne. And uh, as Stephanie said, you know, people just pass your name around when they see your work ethic. And one thing just snowballed into another. And here I am today, still writing, singing, performing, working with various people and other groups aside from singing on my own. I'm currently working with a 42 piece symphony where we're doing pandemic videos. So just because we're home, we're not sitting home watching Netflix. We're still working and producing music um, and um, putting out music, um, one song after the other, just enjoying what I do and um, just looking forward to the next chapter. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, um, I, I got a, a lot I'm going to ask you, but I'm going to kick it over to Kobe and pull him into this um, um, conversation. Now, Kobe's a young man. Um, of course, he, hasn't, he doesn't have the longevity of you all as of yet, but um, he's new to the industry doing big things. Now, Kobe, um, what got you started in the industry aside from your talent, and how are you enjoying the journey thus far? Um, I, it's, I wasn't the kid that, uh, of course, I grew up in church. Um, my father's a, my father's a uh, preacher. Um, and I guess I, as growing up as a kid, I wasn't, you'll never see videos of me as a kid, the one that acted like I was performing or I was singing or, you know, I wasn't, it wasn't something that I, it wasn't something that I thought about doing. Um, and at 17, I think the, uh, the, after I got out of high school, um, I went to, I had got a call from a musician that used to play for my dad. And he would, uh, he was like, man, I was talking about you to these group of this, this, these uh, producers and I've been bragging about you. So I want you to come. I'm like, man, I'm no, I, I, it's, was, it's not something I plan on doing. It's okay. I appreciate it. And I kept moving. Um, I ended up going to see uh, uh, the, the Justin Bieber movie at the time, his journey up into where he was at. So as soon as I got out there, I went with a group of friends and they, they talked me into going. So after that movie was over, I called the musician back and said, when, where do I need to be? Um, and that following weekend, I was in the studio, uh, just to, I was just going just to meet the team and just play around a bit and learn the ropes and how to get used to it. And it took off from there. And I fell in love with the studio aspect of it. S soon thereafter, the shows came and it just, it was just like a domino effect. Like, I want to do this. Um, it's always been, music has always been an outlet for me. Uh, it's been my, it's been my encouragement. Um, you know, those at times, and I just felt like if I can, how easy it came for something that a lot of people around me made it seem as, as like it was hard, and it's not easy. I am understand that, but it's definitely, it's definitely been a great journey, regardless, even the doors that have closed, um, the ones that are, uh, you know, that are being uh, yet and still opened, the ones that I know are coming. Um, it's been, it's been, like I said, it's been great at overall. Like I said, the ups and downs. Um, there's been times where I've wanted to stop. <laughs> I think that's and I think that's everybody, uh, life in general at times. But I can't complain. I won't complain, and I'm coming. So yeah, they just got to get ready. I, I don't know what you know. Hey, y'all just got to be ready because I'm not stopping. I'm on the way. That's what I'm talking that's, about. That's wonderful. That's, that's inspiring. Wonderful <laughs> now, let me, now let me toss yeah. a question to you, uh, Stephanie. Then I'm going to toss a question to you, um, Avis, and back to you, Kobe. Now, Stephanie, okay. um, what was it like working with Michael Jackson? 
it was amazing. I have a story. You know, I didn't tour with Michael. I did his records, okay? I, I'm a percussionist as well, you know, tambourine player and everything. So I played on several of the Jackson's records and on Michael Jackson's records. But when he called me to um, arrange uh, the backgrounds and also get together the choir, 45 person choir for Can You Feel It, the iconic song, um, he called me at three o'clock in the morning. I'm in the bed sleeping and I hear the ring. Hey, uh, Stephanie? I said, yes, this is Michael. I said, oh, yes, Michael. He says, uh, can you make sure, you know, the choir you're putting together, I need to have some children in there that can really sing of every race, creed, and color. And I said, oh my God, you know, and I said, okay. Now, mind you, we had to do this the, in two days. Of course, I didn't go to sleep. I couldn't wait for after Musicians Union, SAG, everybody, all my friends that had children who could sing. And by the time we went to the, got to the session, I had the choir with the children's choir and just wore it out. And it was just wonderful. The man was, is, a, is still a genius because his music is forever. He also listened to me because he knew my gift and he respected it. So he asked me questions, what to do. And also, you know, I'm a color tour soprano, a lyrical soprano. So when you hear the tops, can you feel it? Can you feel it? Can you feel it? He quadrupled my voice by myself, separate, from the choir, so he could have a lot of, you know, that wall of sound and the soprano very high. So he respected my gift. He let me be me and create. And he was just easy to work with and he was just a genius. I just loved him. He, he was wonderful, but he never slept. He'll call you three o'clock in the morning, you know, asking you to get your stuff together. <laughs> it, it, was, it, was, it was great. Wow, once in a lifetime experience. Now, what about you, Avis? Um, yes. Another icon that you worked with as well, um, being Ray Charles. What was it like working with Mr. Ray Charles? One of the best teachers and the best experiences of my life. And that was the kind of relationship that I established with him. They called me the Raylet They Got Away because I went in as a young singer and I allowed him to teach me. Now, with Ray, I went in singing the first soprano because he had a young lady who had a family incident and uh, she had to leave uh, when she came back. Normally he usually traveled with four or three or four girls. When she came back, he really liked me because he felt that he could teach me. And I, that's the way I go into most situations. I go in humble and willing to learn, even though I have my own space and I know that I'm a leader and I know I have a big personality, but I also know that the first uh, impression I want people to know about me is that I'm willing to be a team player as well and I'll see and respect who you are and what you have to offer and then you, you know you get an opportunity to see what I can bring to the party so uh, once Ray heard me he saw my work ethic as well uh, certain things were brought to the forefront after I got involved with the girls and you know the girls became like family to me because I was raised amongst women so I know how to get along with females you know, big personalities, leaders, older sisters. So I'm good with girls. You know, some women in the beginning have this thing where they don't really know how to perceive you. Well, I'm, I'm cool, I'm easy. And so to work with five beautiful women, first off, that could really sing, came from the church. Um, they allowed me to come in and bring my voice, my talent, my energy, and to kind of change the face of the Raylet. Because if you notice all the vocalists and all the vocals that you see from the Raylet, they're grouped around a five prong microphone. So I came to Ray Charles in the second half of his career. By the time the Ray Charles movie came out, I traveled with him the second half of his life. So the things that happened and uh, performances were after that. A anyway, the Raylets that came after, we uh, started doing choreography because I brought to the forefront, why don't we do some movements on stage? Why don't we be a little bit more expressive? And then I said to Mr. Adams, who was Ray Charles's manager, I don't really care for these clothes, they make me feel old. So he went right away and he changed our wardrobes and uh, Ray says, I like you. Can you sing contralto? I'm like, uh, yeah. As you saw the young lady in the Ray Charles movie, I said, I can sing anything. And you know, when you're young, you just kind of have that attitude like, hey, I am that girl. <laughs> so, <laughs> He allowed me to stay on and I sang contralto, which is the bass. So I went from one end of the gamut to the other with him. And it was like the best three years of my entertainment life and career. Wow. Now, um, 
again, our station identification, we are the Sherrard Show. We're broadcasting on Comcast NBC as well as iPod Radio. Talking to some uh, beautiful individuals, uh, Stephanie Spruill, who is an iconic singer, uh, dancer, performer, percussionist, also an author. We're going to talk about her book in a moment. Um, and she's been in the industry for many, many years um, since she was three years old. Because look at her. She likes her absolutely great. And then we have Avis Perel, who's a fabulous young lady as well. Both have fabulous voices, work with iconic figures, and have a spirit that is so humble and beautiful and they grace me on the Sherrard Show. And then Mr. Kobe Cordell, who we're going to hear his sound in a moment. If you think you can sing, wait till you hear Kobe. So we're going to uh, talk to him in a moment at that. Now, um, let me throw this to you, Kobe. Um, now, you're enjoying your ride in the industry, but tell me a little bit of some of the downsides of the industry that, you, that makes you sometimes feel like, um, is it really worth it? Uh, the downside to be uh, first thing, uh, first things first is like she was uh, talking about, I think it's team. Um, with it not being something that, uh, that I've always wanted to do, uh, my, knowledge of, my knowledge of what it takes and what it required and what to know and needed to know, I was, I was naive. Um, and being 17, na naive, coming into a game like this, um, it's, you just, you know, you got, you got so many people doing so much for you and telling you, you know, the, the where we can go and the where we're, who we know and the name dropping. And, and I'm a 17 year old kid from Blythe, California. I'm like, this is great. Let's do it. I'm just caught up in the production of the music. I just, just let me sing. Whatever y'all doing in the back, I'm with it. Just as long as I can keep going in here singing and keep being on the stage. And I think with, with, uh, with that and then um, believing so much in other, you know, believing so much of the wrong people. Um, I'm not saying everybody I've come across is, is wrong and their intentions are wrong. Um, I think the lack of knowledge is, has been a down, was a downfall in the early stages of this because um, I'm, I'm a team player. She, I agree with what she said, I'm a team player. So any move that I made or any, as I got along in this and my name was being brought up or I was being seen in places that people that knew me didn't expect to see me, um, and they wanted to work together. They wanted to do something or they wanted to move. I never moved without mentioning the team that originally got me started in even doing this. Um, and like I said, uh, the lack of knowledge began to, you know, I'm thinking I'm doing something about like, okay, well, I come with a team and, you know, this or that. And then it turned into, well, they're trying to pull you this way. And then they're trying to do this. You shouldn't listen to this. You shouldn't have, you shouldn't. And it's just, it just start, it starts pulling back and forth and, like I said, not knowing what exactly you're supposed to do in situations like that, at the time, people start to not only pull themselves from you, but they start to think that, well, they start to think that your, your intentions are foul. And, and that's not the case with me. It's never been the case with me. So I think, I think the team, uh, has, that's been a downside. I've been through so many different relationships and friendships uh, within music, um, outside of my personal life, but within music that have seems so strong and something little happens to where it's it, and then it just it's blown up bigger than it is because um whatever their intentions were i have i may have disrupted because i thought that i was doing you know it's just it was just just having people around you it uh that's really been a big a big downside the biggest one for me i would take um i know the moments like i said of wanting to quit and wanting to stop and all of that are going to come and they have um Sometimes I've stopped, I'll be like, I'm done. And in the same 30 minutes, I'll be like, I got it. And uh, so that's, you know, that's going to come. But I think having a, um, that's one of the reasons why I'm here now, you know, in the stages again, I just, I want to build, I'm building a better team. You know, the people I have around me at this current moment are, uh, are the best, um, are the best that I've had um, in a long time. So what the downside has really been who you keep around you because what people don't understand is that everybody's not supposed to know what you're doing. Um, and you get so excited as a younger, as a youngster, you get so excited, you start telling people, and then that them spirits start to interrupt whatever it is that you had going slow. Um, so I just, I, I just, it's really the team that's been the downside is just having the right people around you to keep you encouraged, not yes men, um, to keep you encouraged, to keep pushing you, to hold you accountable. Um, being uh, like I said, as young people, I think accountability is something that uh, not enough people uh, hold us hold us to because of the way that the world has changed so much, but being held accountable, uh, encouraged to push, and not being yes man. So, well, you, you certainly are a son of a preacher, boy. He's he's preaching that sermon this afternoon. That's excellent. Now, let me throw it over to you, Stephanie. Now, you've been in the industry for so many years, working with some really powerful people. Have you had days where you felt like you wanted to give up? 
Well, you know, I have a phrase that don't give up, don't give out, and don't give in. You see, you have to keep it moving. You know, you have to go through it to get to it. So don't give up, right? The name of my book is 17 Points to Longevity. Two hours on stage and the other 22 is handling your business. That's why it's called show business. It's a business. And we have to treat ourselves like a business. So the, the yes, I felt bad. I've been, you know, they try to beat me up, try to cut me off at the knees and all that. But see, like I said in the beginning of this interview, I did not play the game because I didn't know what the game was. Thank God. So I didn't play it. I just stayed focused on my vision, the vision that God had put on my heart to come to fruition. You have to understand, I was a young mother, okay, coming into this, this industry. So my daughter was at A&M Records with me in my car. You see, I was, I, it wasn't like I had a lot of money in those days. I was, I had my hustle on, but I never lost sight of that vision that God had put on my heart to come to fruition, not somebody else's vision. So that's why I have the book the way it is in three, you know, sections. And I know you're not talking about my book, but uh, my young blood, you're going to go through it to get to it. And it's okay. I'm talking to all the young bloods out there. It's all about old school meets new school. You, you keep <laughs> it, you keep it pushing. Okay. You That's keep right. it moving with your skills that you have, and you're, you're a PK too, yeah. but we got to watch everything. That's why I said, you know, my first, my first point when people come to my portal, because I have a school of voice and arts development. Like I said, I teach everybody around the world. It's an international school, Sproul House Music School of Voice and Artist Development. I'm an artist developer because in this industry, we have to learn how to treat ourselves from head to toe. And order in inside and out. So that's why I'm talking to the young blood right now. You just keep it moving with confidence. Keep that confidence going in spite of. My second point is focus. Stay focused on your vision, not somebody else's vision. My third point, you know, being a fierce singer, I can't wait to hear your stuff. You know, fill up the lungs <laughs> because of your capacity. Engage that diaphragm. And all these things, is, even when we are feeling out, giving up, our chakra right here is where our solar plexus are, close to our heart. And that's where we have to continue to come from, our heart. That's what we're giving the world, our heart as artists. We're special. We are divine beings, being an artist. And we have to know our divinity. We have to know our greatness. Early very on, good. So young, very so good. Young. Now, now, Avis, let me throw it to you because yeah. our time is running short. So, um, Avis, let I'm me throw sorry. it to you. <laughs> It's okay. It's okay. Because I want to hear from, I want to hear each of you all's beautiful voices. But let me get to you, Avis, for one moment. Now, Avis, uh, how did you feel real quickly? Have you ever felt that you wanted to give up in the industry? No. <laughs> Simply, no. Um, in my opinion, music is everything to me, but God has given us all more than one talent. It's up to us to find out what else we can do. Because if you're not doing music, it's not the end of the world. Secondly, I've always believed in education. I want to instill in young people that have a talent. There are many people out there that have beautiful voices. They just can sing. They were just born with a voice. There are many people that were taught singers. Um, but the bottom line is get your education. Finish school, go to college while it's still fresh in your mind and take up some computer classes so that you can link those skills with other things. That's how I was able and I am able to produce my own videos. I produce my own music. I'm not a great musician, but I can play enough chords. I'm really self-taught. I buy and accumulate uh, songs and music and I know patterns and I put music together. That's why I was able to share with you that I have nine CDs and I said, if you keep throwing paint against the wall, eventually something's gonna stick. I, I write my own music. So I wanna encourage young people, write your songs, uh, create your own path. Don't really wait for someone to come and be your instructor, your teacher, be open for answers and results, but get to work on yourself. Um, get some equipment and study and find out somebody that can help you produce a video and show you how to produce your own music and you know put your own videos to get put your packaging together put your work no, no, together. Avis, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna interrupt you real quick and, now because um we, we got a treat for everybody i want to i want my fans to do this because we're running short on time but let me hear about stephanie okay. really quick your book i need, I need to see your book okay. so we can uh, your fans can know where to purchase your book yes go on amazon okay it's an ebook as well okay and I also have an exercise tape where you can go on Amazon and get it or, you know, and uh, it's 17 points to longevity and show business, staying focused on your vision. I have it in three sections, what are personal? Okay, personal, 
career points, and financial. Personal, I'm going to say quickly. Personal is confidence, focus, emotional well-being. Mm, that's a big one in this industry. Physical well-being, yes. Vocal training. Career points, that's in section two. Education, skills, versatility, business savvy, risk factors, self-marketing, networking, and industry contact. And financial, when you start making that money, financial stability, your environment, global awareness, and trends. I speak several languages. My second language is Spanish. So I have, like I said, my school is international. I teach people from nine to 99 how to become the best you you can possibly be. You can also get my CD. It's a jazz day. You can, like I said, I have nine CDs as well and all the other records that I've done with everybody else. I was on Arista Records. I was on CBS. So while I was being a background singer, which bought this house and my Mercedes, everything, I was also an artist. So I never left that side of myself. And like Ava said, no, never gave up, but I reinvented myself. See, Excellent. we have a lot of skill going on. So you reinvent yourself, you keep it moving. Whatever God puts on your heart to come to fruition, you do that. Very good, very good, I appreciate that. Now, um, really quick from all my, for all the people who are waiting for all three of these individuals to sing, I'm gonna leave it to you and I'm gonna start off with you first, Kobe. Um, Stephanie and Avis, I want you to think of something, um, singing a, 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 a hook off of your favorite song or off of one of your albums for our audience now, as well as Kobe, I want you to buckle up. Now, just really quickly, a 30 second tidbit of your um, song issues. Take it away, Kobe. I know we just met. I should probably take it slow. I just broke up with my ex. I'm here to tell you I've got a lot of issues. Lust is an issue. The way I spend my life is an issue. Oh, I got a lot of issues. Okay. That's all right. <laughs> now, Kobe, um, is the single out now? Where can we purchase it? Yes, the single is on all digital platforms, Spotify, iTunes, uh, SoundCloud, CD Baby, they do it. It's everywhere. Just put okay, it on YouTube. Good. You definitely want to see it. It's going to be on your screen as well. Uh, Kobe Cordell, this man is going places. And after COVID-19 is over, I'm sure he's going to be coming to a city near you. Now on to you, Stephanie. Um, let's hear a tidbit of one of your uh, famous songs or one of your current hits. Okay. Um... I have many that I've written and stuff, but something that's on my heart that you can get on, go on uh, YouTube or uh, Amazon and get. I just feel golden today, right? Because I'm, I'm taking my freedom. I'm pulling it off the shelf. I'm putting it on my chain. I'm wearing it around my neck. I'm, I'm taking my freedom. I'm hanging it on a star. Wherever you choose to go, I, I know to take me far. I'm living my life like it's golden. 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 Oh, <laughs> boy, oh, and you boy. can get that. Okay, on my CD, on my latest CD is my Jazz Day CD that I wrote. I didn't sing one of my originals. That's one I just love, and I open up my my show. Living my life like it's gold. Thank you, Stephanie. Now, um, the information is on, a, on your bottom of your screen, so you can definitely purchase it, as well as her book, 17 Points to Longevity in the Show Business. Um, and you support it. Um, this is going to help you to be educated and as well as last, perhaps, as long as she has in the industry. Now, let's kick it off to you, Avis. Uh, Avis, you're on, the, you're on the floor. Now, you can sing a current hit from your CD, or you can also sing something from yesteryear. Take it away, Avis. Okay, well, the uh, most recent CD is Avis Harrell Live with the Conservatory Jazz Big Band, which is a group that I work with um, every three to five years in Tahiti, and I start at the Grand Theater. So this CD is now released on hearnow.com, uh, but I just released a single and YouTube uh, produced by Larry Ball, the great Larry Ball, Harvey and Carolyn Fuqua, Fuqua did the arrangement, and the single is Wonderful Day. So here it is. On a wonderful day like today, I defy any cloud to appear in the sky. Dare any raindrop to plop in my eye on a wonderful day like today. On a wonderful morning like this, when the moon is as big as a yellow balloon. Even the sparrows are singing and tune on a wonderful morning like this. On an evening like this, I could kiss everybody. I'm so full of love and goodwill. Let me say furthermore, I adore everybody. So come and die, the pleasure's mine, and I will pay the bill. And you'll have to go to YouTube and listen to the rest of it. <laughs> oh my goodness, well. <laughs> 
I, I, I am so enchanted this Saturday afternoon to have you very special individuals on the show. Kobe Cordell for your soulful singing. Yeah. Definitely pick up his uh, single. It's on the bottom of your screen. As well as his album, uh, Issues, are really enjoying uh, what we heard. As well as Stephanie Sprill, who's doing some big things, as usual, with great longevity in the industry. Pick up her book, as well as her CD. You will see it on your screen as well. And then Mrs. Avis Harrell, who uh, continues to shine, doing big things. Pick up her, uh, you see it on your screen as well, her CD, as well as uh, check out what she's done in the industry. All these individuals, they're fascinating. But even more than that, since music is the universal language, they continue to speak it very well. I'm Sherard. Thank you all for being a guest on the show. Our next week episode, we're going to do part two of uh, making the music industry better for tomorrow, as well as we have a very special guest um, coming up on the show. I'm Sherard. Hope you have a great Saturday and the rest of the weekend. We will see you next week. Thank you, Sherard. Thank you, Sherard. Appreciate you, boss. Nice to meet you. Have a good one. Peace out. You too now. Peace out.